This is the time, this is the place, and this is FC3 Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky. And since everything is geeky, if you love it enough, you never know what you're going to get. This is your host, IMC. This week we'll be talking RPG homebrew and game design theory with Derek Nekritz and the, of the Mage College blog. Because I speak for a living. I'm good at that. I'm still going to trip over words for the rest of my life, I'm pretty sure. But after that, stick around for our upcoming events and our question of the week. How we doing, gang? Hi. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. In the studio, Hello. as always, the legendary Billy DeTori. Hello. Hello, Billy. He survived yesterday. The equal leg- equally legendary Tanya Metris. Only in my own mind. The more legendary than most, Sherry. I'm fabulous. I can't say producer Sherry anymore. She scolds me when I do that. I do not scold you when you call me producer Sherry. Yes. She only scolds you when you say you scold her. Okay, there's that. <laughs> and along, along, for the, along for the ride... <laughs> We've we've lost him. We didn't even start talking about the Nazis yet. I made Chris no. laugh. We made Chris. We made Chris <laughs> no. laugh on oh, a regular no, we were, basis. We were breaking Chris on the way here. Oh, you're not supposed to break him before he gets here. Oh we're no, no, it's better him. to break me all before. The time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a never-ending source of amusement. And last but not least, our bouncing boy, Ian Christopher. Hello, and, Ian Christopher. I, I, you know what? You guys keep assuming I don't know that. You said last. Get the microphones. <laughs> At the microphones. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, that bundle of joy bouncing around in the back of the room. Our she's lovely monk is in the house today. Hi. Hi, darling. And, you know, she's like our, 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 our best groupie ever. <laughs> you know, when we get the good music playing, she's just jigging around in the, dark, in the background. But, uh, Absolutely. So, but we're good. Everybody's, everybody's hanging in there. Hugs are, uh, hugs are abound at the moment. Alana's getting her hugs in. Everything is good, Chris. Everything's good. Um, we are day one post-move. Closing happened. Chris is a homeowner. Yay, me. Yay! Yay! And, and I it's have... It's been a long time coming. I have the Advil addiction to, to prove it. <laughs> oh, God. Between yesterday and no today... No idea I'm, what that's I like. hurt I'm right now. I'm your supplier with yeah, to that. Yeah, I hurt right now. But I am really, really great. I it was like 12, 13 people showed up. 13. I put the, the call out on Facebook. You know, and you you see that all the time. Hey, I'm going to be moving. Can you come give me a hand in a couple? We would have had 16, but they were doing gish stuff. That's two. It was gish yes. week. And we'll talk more about that in a little we bit. We will. But, um, but yeah, I was I was amazed and, and humbled at how many people came out of the woodwork to help me out. Billy was there. So thank you, Billy. I just wanted pizza. Yeah, they see. <laughs> pizza and wings. Uh, Tanya was there, so thank you for Tanya, and thank you, Ian, my boy, helped I had us no out. Choice. Yeah, well, you know, you did. You stayed at home for a little bit, and then you came back to my house. It's all good. Um, it was hot yesterday. It, it was brutal. The, yeah, the, the temperature wasn't bad. It was the high humidity which yeah. killed us. Oh, we were all drenched. We were all drenched. Sean was like, you know, he'd gone through a second shirt. I think it was. He changed into a sh- second shirt. It was crazy because he was getting his car fixed, but yeah. it looked like he had been sitting in his hot tub for two minutes. Yeah. It like, was it was brutal. Like I know down. all about that. Oh. I ended up getting sick because of the heat yesterday. Mm. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. Ended up going home and not doing gish because yeah. of it. So oh. it's horrible. It's like one thing that Chris didn't think of. I'm just like, I've got the flat of water. I've got this. I got that. He goes, Oh, okay. And sure enough, like I was kind well, of in a daze yesterday. Things right. were just kind of, and I was very grateful because things was, were happening, and I wasn't like I had no clue what was going on at the time. A half hour into the move, we, we happened to all congregate in the driveway at mm-hmm. your old house, and we're like, okay, two minute forced water break. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care, whatever. And then was it Christine is still Kristen is still Christine t- Christine? She's still taking stuff in and out of the house. I'm like, what take a break. To the- forced water break that i just said she was still going in and out of the house she's a dedicated but. worker she really is when she puts her head she we she and i work at city hall together mm-hmm. and uh, and when she gets into it on something she, it's, it's it she's well, gonna plow through it billy walked home afterwards and mowed his lawn yeah that's i figured i may as well while it's still sweaty there you go <laughs> did you play in the rain afterwards no i i got lucky i finished mowing the lawn walked in the house so ooh, i'm gonna go shower and change and be refreshed and that next thing i hear is like this Enormous thunder <laughs> yeah. and downpour. I, mean, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. We didn't get any of we that down our way. Yeah. Can I tell you, your daughter came and found me. I'm sure she did. She's, she's, <laughs> she's like a puppy when thunder comes. She's just like, she doesn't like loud noises. She's not big she? on them, no. So it's like we're running through she's the like house, me. I'm not closing big on all either. the windows while you were getting the couch or where you're coming back and mm-hmm. we're closing all the windows. And all of a sudden, thunder hit and she's like in the middle of the stairs. I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, no. Yeah. I said, well, come snuggle me if you need. And yeah. she's like, okay. There was a thunderstorm two two summers ago. There was a massive thunderstorm. It raged for a while. And when the when the first strikes hit, 
I hear on down the stairs. She comes flying down the stairs. She jumps on the couch and just like tries to get in between me and the cushions. Can I tell you, she is so my soul daughter. She is. <laughs> she really I is. I was the same way as a child. I would come running downstairs and pounce onto my parents' bed because it was just I, the opposite. I didn't like them as a child. I was mm-hmm. scared to death. Well, my room was upstairs. I was yeah. by myself, or whatever, and it was a farmhouse. It was like there you go. I came running downstairs because I don't mind thunderstorms so much anymore, but it's fireworks and. Things like that, and suddenly people shouting. You know when There's when they weren't. For that. Yeah, there are exactly what I do. Yeah, see, I'm I turn around bothered. and I go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, "Yes, let's go worship." It's Yay! Like, what else can I light off? <laughs> there you <laughs> like, go. Can I, can I play? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yep. So that's uh-huh. it. We're catching up. Life is good. Um, Gish week. Tell us a little bit more about Gish week. Share. Um, well, I was going to do it at the end when we oh, talked about what we was can making, do that. Us, making our geeky little hearts happy. I was well, then let's do that. So let's hold off on that. We can do that. We'll hold off on that. Finding out what Gish is, if yeah. you don't already know. I, I just assume it was a festival honoring Lillian Gish. Uh, <laughs> it is, strangely enough. You nailed it. How did you know? <sighs> what else could it be? <laughs> just <laughs> wait. <laughs> a special type of guy in fish, a Gish? Yeah, okay. That's it. That's exactly it. Goddess fish? Gish? Yeah. Okay, yeah. stop Stop while you're ahead. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we no, come no, back... No, no, no. No? What? I did it. I did the thing. You Introduce did... the gang. Oh, you know what? Do we have to start over again? No, we have to do the sponsors. We have to do sponsors. We don't have any sponsors. Pay... We have stuff. Talk. Yes, dear. <laughs> I wrote new stuff. There's Want new to copy. be a part of FC3 oh, Monkey oh. Business? <laughs> don't, whatever you do. And the Mighty Monkey I will throw Jesus at don't you. Don't throw Jesus at me. Which one? <laughs> Any uh, of them. Anyway, all right. Sponsor shout outs. Want to be a part of FC3 Monkey Business and Mighty Monkey Corporation? There are a few ways of doing that. The first is to become a sponsor. You got to work on that one. It's a little trippy, it's a little, little hard on the tongue. I'm just going to say. Oh, my God. Um, we He's have so getting punched. We have sponsorship levels of all kinds and are even willing to create custom sponsorship packets. Please contact us at sponsorships at fc3roc.org. Uh, Patreon. The next t- way to support us is by supporting us on Patreon. Please check us out www.patreon.com backslash fc3roc. All membership levels will include access to the Patreon only blog. Plus, stop moving the script. Plus, Sorry. tons of great perks at all levels, including early podcast, Twitch, and convention information. Shout out to our amazing patrons, Jen Bevan, and our newest patron, Ramon Aiello. Thank you for supporting us. Reviews. You want to help others find the show? Please leave us a review whenever you listen to us. This is the single easiest way to support the show and encourage others to listen. Every review will be thanked on the air, and any questions will be answered. We want this to be a conversation, so please send us your questions. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Podbean, YouTube, Stitcher, and hopefully within your own ears. Is there a place you want to find your podcast but at uh, but you can't find MC3 Monkey Business, let us know. And follow us on Twitter at, at fc 3 mb podcast. And if you do, make sure you say hi. We love it when you say hi. Is Podbean the new one? Podbean is the new one. Huh. We actually have, we have control of that account finally? We do, Sexy. and um, we are going to be finally building the FC3 Monkey Business website. Outstanding. Will be found on Podbean. Uh, Absolutely amazing. We had a review as well. Uh, we'll Did we? talk about that for we'll the. W- about- we'll talk about that at the next with the next with the uh, okay. One. Yeah, that that makes sense. next week. Yeah, okay. so we'll be talking we'll talk about, about that next week. week. All right, Yay. so something to look forward to next week. All right, so now can we take a break? We're gonna take yes. a break now. Yes. We're gonna take a break now, and when we come back from taking a break, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite things on the planet, Dungeons and Dragons, with uh, Derek Neckritz is here, and uh, we're going to be talking about homebrew stuff. Looking forward, to Looking forward to it. Derek's already at his microphone, ready to go. And uh, and make sure I'm going to admonish you now before the break, so that when we're talking seriously, you get you get right in on that microphone. You got it. All right, my Make man. Me love to the microphone. <laughs> See that? That's Desi, why. Desi. Yeah, yeah. I got brother Weezes, and it's like this is scary. <laughs> so, all right. So we're gonna take a quick break. Do the thing that you do, Billy.
Derek Nekritz is a dungeon master and a homebrew content create homebrew content creator. Holy Moses, I am tripping over my lips today. From his blog, The Mage College, he shares his work with others in the Dungeons and Dragons community and is well known in the Twitterverse as Archmage Derek. He is currently working on three different RPGs of his own, and which some of us monkeys hope to help him play test. Absolutely. There's a lot of people pick throwing me, their pick arms. Me, yeah, pick me, pick me, me. me. Um, <laughs> Derek is creator on DMs Guild and Drive Through RPG in real life. In real life. Uh, he is a professional tutor and translator married to a woman extremely out of his league, but with shockingly low standards. I did not write this, <laughs> Derek. <laughs> So I'm just I just say whatever Sherry puts in front of me. I was briefed in the car. That I so, was get welcome to the show, my Thank friend. Wow. <laughs> I read you, that earlier. I'm just like you have damn. married to a you woman extremely actually, out of his league, but with shockingly low standards. You Holy should Moses! See his wife. Well, give Hold me a on, picture. Let me go to oh, Facebook. Bring up Derek's God, Facebook. Let's she see it. Is gorgeous and smart and funny and a gamer. I, yeah. I, I saw a nice picture of, uh, really, of Billy there. I really like how you guys are like, hey, let me shake your hand with this hand and slap you in the face with the other. <laughs> <hand>. <laughs> Would you expect any less, Derek? No, not at all. Okay. I like oh, is that her? With the, yes, the yes, fil- it is. Oh, she's darling, yeah. What's her name? Her name's Kana. Kana? Mm-hmm. Tell Kana we said hello. That's I one will. of the, my character's names was Kana. Or Kana. Yeah. Kana. yeah. And, uh, and Jules, ones. Jules adopted that name, yes, too, for did. one of her first characters. Yeah, it's actually a pretty popular name in Japan. Mm -hmm. So with all the work that I do with the Japanese international students at the school, they're like, oh my God, is is she Japanese? No, no, she's not. (laughs) Then why did she, are you... Is that that her birth name or is that a name that she just uses? It was was actually her birth name. Her mom just liked the way it sounded. Because I know a lot of avid gamers, cosplayers, whatnot, they kind of take on a a stage name per se and and that becomes their their everyday name. That's how they introduce themselves to people and whatnot. So I'm just curious. Yeah, she actually dumbs down the spelling for people um, okay she, it's actually for her twitter handle it's kana and she just spells it like con like william okay. shatner screaming okay the wrath of con and then uh like you don't know what you're talking about because <laughs> she because people see kana they're like is it is it kana is it connie <laughs> kana is kana it... kana kana chameleon i do that all the time do we have any more script stuff here for it? can i just I jump can. into a conversation you can just jump into the conversation beautiful i just wanted to make sure all right, good deal. Well, tell Connor we said hi. Will do. And I hope to, we meet her again sometime. Oh, that'd be awesome. Because I think we're going to be working together a little bit more coming in, you know, going forward. Hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Because Sherry's come to, Sherry and Chris both have come to me with some great ideas about some spinoff stuff. And and I know that we've been very intent um, talking about um, doing our own critical role kind of a kind of a podcast. That would be very cool. So a couple different ones we couple have different ideas ones. for. Test kitchen, stuff like that, you know. So. Yeah, and I really like, that's where Derek's creation his his own rpgs i'd love to have him run something with us with our future so it's uh, not just D D that you create you have your own rpgs that you're working on yeah yeah I do. all right so tell me a little bit more about that um so i am working on three different games right now uh-huh. uh the first one which is hopefully reaching some sort of released play test mm-hmm. i keep saying end of august but i know myself too well so <laughs> i know that feeling. hopefully it's going to be close to <laughs> september um it's called npcs the coping Okay. And what it does is it takes the idea of the fact that uh, NPCs in towns deal with so much crap from Mm -hmm. adventurers nonstop. The players are playing as NPCs, and the game master is running the party that's coming through and ruining the town okay <laughs> it's almost it's almost like that that short-lived sitcom that was out recently where it was the the, the company that does the cleanup after the superheroes battle in town yes yes i can't it's remember kind of like that yeah i can't i can't remember the we name of that show. that show yes i know and i can't remember the name of it either yeah. powerless powerless, powerless. Yes. thank you monk appreciate it and the the wayne company yes yes so so you're the the, the players are actually <laughs> You know the the the, by, the the unfortunate bystanders. Yeah, you um you get you can play characters like the the mayor, the captain mm-hmm. of the guard, the magic item salesman. Um, <laughs> I want to be the bartender. Yeah. You oh can, yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. Barkeep is one of the playable classes. They're probably one of the more powerful char- character classes too, because it's always the barkeep that like when things go really south in a bar, they're the first one with the battle axe calming everything down. I want to be a blacksmith. It's, it's, I was just thinking cool. that too. Yeah. yeah. There is there are actual special abilities that are attributed to everyone, and the bar t- the barkeep 
uh, does have an ability to immediately stop a fight because it's always you have that trope in every movie. Mm-hmm. Where take the it fight's outside. Going on. It's either take <laughs> it outside or suddenly a stool is broken over someone's head, and yeah. then it's like a like the barkeep is the one who ended the fight. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, there's there's all these fun like tropes that are woven in there. That sounds good. I, I want to play that one. Yeah, I definitely want to play that one. Yeah, when he was telling us about this, it was. <laughs> I'm used to that sound. There, there's no pterodactyls in the game, but I can okay. work on that. We could probably you know, throw a couple in there. We've played a game where there's dinosaurs running around and pterodactyls and everything. Where's yeah. Tony when we need him? I know, seriously. Dinosaurs on a, a spaceship. spaceship. <laughs> um, but there's, it's uh, if you're familiar with uh, the powered by the apocalypse system, not really. Um, it's uh, it's a rules light system that okay. uses two d six. So you're not sitting there adding things together. Gotcha. And the way that this one goes is you pretty much tell me who your character is, and if it's in line with it, then it happens. And okay. It's, it's super simple, so anybody can play it. That's cool. So it's easier for beginners. They can just kind of jump in and just join the story and have some fun. Absolutely. That's the type of character creation I remember from uh, Beyond the Supernatural. Hmm. was basically, who do you want to be? Let's figure mm-hmm. out how it works. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's another sh- game that I actually have somebody on tap to run for us for the mm-hmm. test kitchen nice. is Beyond the Supernatural. Okay. Another and, Chris. <laughs> and We come in six packs now. <laughs> Wegmans has a bulk aisle, just Chris's, you know. Yeah, go ahead. And, and one other one that we were talking about for test kitchen is mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. Heroes on a and, um, Turtle Bone. It, it goes to the shout out that we had earlier. With Ramon. Uh huh. Ramon. We're, we're talking yes. to him about running that for us. Oh, very for the cool. Test kitchen. I, and I think he was my DM growing up. Nice. That's cool. And I think that's one of the fun things about all these these offshoot ideas we've been coming up with is that there's multiple people that are involved. Yeah. So we're going to get a lot of different views. We're not going to see the same thing all the time. You're not going to see the same game master, the same tropes, the same kind of hooks. And stuff. We're going to see a lot of different people. That I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That's yeah, a lot of fun. Um, now, is there more you wanted to talk about with... What was the name of that one again? Was, that's NPCs The Coping. NPCs The Coping. Okay. And that's... <laughs> so, now, is that going to be published soon? Or? That's so... I'm hoping to do a beta test. Okay. Um, that's going to be out on Drive Through RPG. Okay. Um, I'm really just looking for feedback. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of talk about stuff like Kickstars or whatever. Um, and... Honestly, there's this joke I constantly make where people say, oh, yeah, that's great. Um, what are you going to do with this? Is there going to be a Kickstarter? Is there going to be the... And you know, they go on with all these things that just happen with RPGs. And mm-hmm. my response is, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm Derek. Yeah. It's like this, this <laughs> a blanket statement of just like, I'm this guy who just, I adopted the title of Archmage. And now I'm like filling it rather than like, I'm fantastic. Now <laughs> I shall rule you peasants. And I'm just like, I don't. No, I just want you guys to be happy. There you go. <laughs> Are we having fun yet? That's all that really matters yeah, at seriously. the moment. Um, so there's that one. Uh, there's another one in the works that's kind of like if you take Dungeons and Dragons, combine it with Cards Against Humanity. Oh, mm. God. It's called Whose Quest Is It Anyway? I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> just like the title. I'm, I, I love it right now. Just the concept and the title alone. I ran, I ran like a sort of, um, I ran like a kitchen distillery version of it a couple mm-hmm. years back. Um, and pretty much all you do is you just take a stack of cards and you're given a situation and you're playing like basically a one-off of Dungeons and Dragons, Mm -hmm. but you're like, so I'm going to use my turnover card, my bow of self-denial. What the hell? (laughs) You just play it off. It's like, what does this bow of self-denial do? Whenever I shoot it, I, I I just feel like I can. Okay. So, uh, roll the dice. Oh, look, you did it. How does that make you feel? Unsure. <laughs> I'm not a murderer. No, see, that's how, I'm already thinking in my head. If I had that one, be the bow of self denial. I'm not a murderer. No, I'm, I'm just to start justifying everything that he does with the bow. Exactly. <laughs> so, I, you can take it a lot of ways. There's no. I'm rules. just shooting at the tree behind the person. There you go. I, I love these games that are coming out, like what you're talking about, that have like some kind of uncertainty principle yeah. to them. Like, have you ever played Dread? No. Yes, yes, I have played Dread, and it's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Dread it's, is... It's an RPG, uh-huh. um, but you have... They don't call them Jenga, because mm-hmm. they can't, because that's an entirely different game, but it's Jenga-style stack. Okay. And when you want to do something, instead of rolling dice to see if you do it, you pull. Oh, I see. And if it, and if it doesn't knock it over... You've succeeded. If it knocks it over, you failed. <laughs> so as this is going, it's causing this amount of tension. Yeah. 
that maybe the scenario wouldn't normally have if you're like going oh my god I gotta do this. oh my god this tower is not looking good <laughs> and so um, you can definitely are there like modifying around. rules like if it's a particularly easy thing you can pick from the top and if it's particularly I've, difficult I've you gotta played, go down a few levels I've never played but um, oh Will, there it is Will Wheaton's uh, tabletop yeah show did it okay and I highly recommend it it was so much fun well, to I'm watch. in I'll try so, anything. I, so th- that's like you, you're like talking my catnip right there. Yeah, you know <laughs> stuff like drive is amazing. Um, mostly because easy over there, Metris. Because a lot of like modern RPG design is going. How can we take stuff that is easy to get into, or you know, because who looks at you know a Jenga tower? Don't call it Jenga. Uh, who looks at a uh, Jenga tower and goes, but I can make does. an RPG. Yeah. yeah, I can make an RPG out of this. <laughs> right. It's like, can you imagine doing that with like Jax or like, oh God, what's that old board game where you had to, uh, you would set down the little like tray and you had to put all the things in the spaces before it popped out at you? Oh, perfection. yeah. Concentration. Perfe- perfection. 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 Yeah, perfection. Can you've um, never known a heart attack until you've played yeah, that exactly. game. <laughs> It's, I'm pretty sure all my first of, heart attack. I'm pretty sure all of my anxiety mm-hmm. is based in that soul game. Yeah, and part of me goes, I should make an RPG out of that. <laughs> I I watched a kid. I remember was a, I, we were in fourth grade and we had an opera, uh, one of those perfection games. And of course we were all you know during recess we're all playing, screaming at each other and la- laughing our asses off um, until I saw the most brilliant play ever. They start the timer, hit the button. And the kid just sits there and stares at it. He's just sitting. We're all screaming. I'm like, you got to go, got to go. And he's just like, just sitting there quietly. All of a sudden, it pops. And then he flies through it and puts all the pieces <laughs> in place. <laughs> it, it popped and slammed shut. And he, then all of a sudden, he goes to work. And he had it done in like 30 seconds. I'm like, all right, that was just not cool, dude. <laughs> that was not cool. But, but you know, got to give credit for trying. All right, so NPCs the coping. And then there was, what was that? Whose Quest is it Whose Quest is it anyway? And there was a third. There's a third one, which is a lot more uh, kind of classic, like, (laughs) I'm writing an RPG that is very highbrow. My God, Matt Mercer just entered the room. Did you hear that? (laughs) Did you hear that? (laughs) Matt Mercer is is one of my main touchstones. Oh, dude, that man is God, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, If I ever get a chance to shake his hand, I'll be like, you you will see me go from 48 years old to 10 in a heartbeat. Wait, he's not God? He follows Derek on Twitter. No, No, he doesn't. Oh no. no! Derek follows no. him. My, yeah, I do. Yeah. No, um, so no not far, Matt Mercer. Um, Mike Merle. Mike Merle. Me. Mike Merle. Yeah. Uh, and Chris Perkins thus far. I, you know, I'm starting to get used to Chris Perkins yet. I'm starting to get to know him a little bit more. He's fantastic. He is. Mm-hmm. I'm liking what I'm. You know, we had you. I know you've got your two cents, and we had our interview with Jeremy Crawford. That was amazing. And oh, thank you. And that was a lot of fun. I mean, could you tell how nervous I was? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there going. Oh my god! Is it Jeremy Crawford? And it's yeah, like, it's like it's like the the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right, like, for I me, can't it's play like... that game. <laughs> <laughs> that was a different podcast. Yes, <laughs> we played we played six six, six degrees, degrees of Mark, Mark Shepard. Shepard. Mark Shepard. Tanya oh. failed. I, uh, it yeah. happened. It's okay, honey. Okay. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. It's all good. We still love you. I didn't mean to uncover that. I'm That's, sorry. <laughs> no, this is well played. Um, go ahead, Billy. I heard, I, uh, I was just going to say, Tanya, Mo Howard, go. <laughs> 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 Mo Howard to Mark Shepard, go. <laughs> Can I Google everything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mark Mark Morales and Chris Perkins and but uh, you had, we just you channeled um, oh Ma- Matt you channeled Mercer, Matt yeah. Mercer there for a second there and I'm, I'm loving to, it. I'd love to sit there and be like, <clears throat> hello and welcome to Critical Role, where uh, me and a bunch of other nerdy ass voice actors play Dungeons and Dragons. That's like, it. See, yeah, um, I like sitting there on like Overwatch, mm-hmm. um, just playing as McCree. Well, it's high noon somewhere. No. There you go. <laughs> See now, now when Matt Mercer becomes a fan of our podcast, he'll he'll hear that and he'll get a kick out of it. He'll be like, "I don't remember doing that." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So it's the third. What's the third one now? So the third one is called Chronicle and Tale. Chronicle and Tale. Okay. Um, it is a dice pool system game mm-hmm. that focuses on uh, a narrative storytelling mm-hmm. by literally telling the character story you don't have so much character classes as what you have called uh chapters okay so if you want to play a character like i want to make a pyromancer knight you can do that okay you take the knight book you take the pyromancer book smash them together and congratulations you're a pyromancer knight okay and the way that you uh develop your character is not through experience points because who wants to track experience points Mm mm-hmm uh, instead you track events mm-hmm. you track so it's like oh well i've never cast this spell before 
Um, but I can now because I just practiced it for a thousand times with this lower level thing. Gotcha. Um, it's there is no really elevator pitch for it because I'm still working on the elevator pitch for myself, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which is sort of self-deprecating. But you know, I just, <laughs> I just drew that bow. So I'm it's like, the bow of self-denial in action, right there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's the bow of self-deprecation. I mean, I guess. I'm okay. Well, it's better than the bow of self-defecation. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's all well and good until you roll an at 20 on that thing, and you're really confused. Then, then now you're really... <laughs> I succeeded, but wait. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm happy about that. Um, so, that sounds like my bard in my last game. <laughs> there was a lot of times when she definitely passed things, and I'm like, but was that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> so as long as she wasn't passing anything like kitty stones. I would hope no, going but well. she did get tossed a couple of times. Okay. Why? Twice. Twice. From the back row. And she had to convince the person to do it. <laughs> That's okay. On our, on our Tuesday game, we're always threatening to throw aerials, halfling everywhere. Yes. That's okay. She's our little cannonball. My halfling actually encouraged it. <laughs> so does she. A new player of mine says, hey, um, so my friend said something about gnome tossing. <laughs> Is that a thing that can happen? And she, like, she has no idea. She, like, she started watching Critical Role. She started um, mm-hmm. looking at the books. But again, you know, there's that sort of like, there's that D&D aspect. There's that sort of mystical RPG-ness where you don't really know how one works until you've played it a couple mm-hmm. times. Now, how long have you been involved in gaming? Um, about a solid five years this November. Okay. Which is really weird because I have broken into something where the, everyone else is like, yeah, I've been doing this for like 20 years. I'm like, I started yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just something that I really picked up and really enjoyed. And I'm one of those people that's kind of like, if you guys have ever seen heroes like Siler, I'm just like, yeah. I want to know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> and and you're not afraid to go picking through people's brains to find it. Yeah, right, okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Keep them on the other side of the table from me, would we? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I just, you know, after running uh, Mm D&D 3.5 and then changing to 5e, Mm -hmm. um, you know, really got me curious about game design because I'm like, okay, 3.5, I needed like three scholars yeah and a priest to be able to tell me what my character did oh my god it was terrible it, it, i love three five for the way that you could customize the, the character to do what you wanted it right. to do but in the in the upper levels the teen levels and up to epic the it was you i had a binder about you know a half an inch thick just to hold on to a just to manage everything that the particular character could do it was it was crazy right and then i remember i have second level spells oh my god yeah that happened to me <laughs> on several occasions it's like you needed to take a day off of work to prepare your spells for your cleric it's mm-hmm. like okay so i've got to prepare it at this level and then and then 5e came out and you know changed everything and i had been looking at pathfinder too yeah um, that's broken yeah oh my god <laughs> pathfinder makes 3.5 look easy yeah um, they did just come out with their uh, Pathfinder playtest for their second edition. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I've seen some of the materials. I I was looking through it the other day, and then I had that moment of, my God, if this in 5e had a baby, it would be the most powerful thing alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, like, that's that's what really intrigues me, because it's like... When Derek wants to highlight something, he channels Matt Mercer. Just remember that. Uh, this is this is my note right he, now. Uh, no, I gotta be <laughs> that's honest. That's actually him. That's, that's him? actually him. Is it really? Yeah. Then, then yeah. I, I've known Derek since before he was born. I, I met his parents when they were pregnant with <laughs> He's him. He's the second generation fair baby, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. Sorry to point at you like no, that's no, rude, no. but so no, no. Um, and he's but he was dramatic from birth. Okay. He is the epitome of the Scorpio. He is everything is larger than life. Love it. And we Bring lost me. we lost dude <laughs> we lost track of. Derek for a while because his family moved away right and um, in, in his parents divorce um, his father kept me but we kind of lost track of each other uh-huh. um, we got back in touch with Derek what was it about five years ago so right about as you were getting into gaming right, um, yeah. what he was in a play that a friend of ours oh nice was also in so you're on you're a stage man too yes yeah, so all right this guy's kindred spirit over yes, here I'm yes. good I'm digging so, part of your tribe yes. he is oh definitely part of the yeah. tribe um, so, but this has always been Derek. This okay. is not him channeling anybody. Gotcha. Matt Mercer may be channeling Derek. I okay. Mean, it's, it's a possibility. That would be cool. That would yeah. be an honor of all honors. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, oh my God. Where was I? <laughs> I was, that was, I, was I was having a thought and then we tangented it. Yep. I'm tired. Because that never happens. Uh, no. The, it's even worse when I'm tired. The, the, play, the Pathfinder playtest. Yes, there we go. Maybe. Thank you. Yeah, because I found that um, game design is more like a map. Yeah. More than, you know, having just an idea. Because it's 
especially when you're you know the the ripe old age of 26 and you've only been gaming for five years mm-hmm. um you get into game design and you're like oh cool i came up with this new idea and someone's like have you ever played vampire the masquerade i'm like uh i've heard of it you know go back and look at it for a little like, bit and be like, damn god it. damn it That's exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay yeah we've reached the point where all the songs have been written we're just trying to find new different chords and whatnot for him oh right. don't Anukulav, don't the cool of the mock song <laughs> okay, okay. Well, i did not it's not where i thought you were going with that what? <laughs> Chris has a halo over his head at the moment. That's amazing. There is a band that I like Stuff happens. one song, and Chris will never let me live it down. Which is... Okay. Hmm? Somebody clue me Dead in. Air. Crickets. Dead Crickets. air. Crickets. Crickets. Just wonderful. No, no, I won't bring it up. Nope. You already no. did. No. Nope. You brought it. <laughs> um, how many times have I been embarrassed on this podcast We're in the past get a couple bad years? Yelp review. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. but you don't sleep next to her. I do. Okay, well, Chris and, and you know the story. You got to sleep sometime. Text me. And, uh, I sleep in the same house. So. Yeah, but you don't count. I know where you. I know where you live. Oh, no, what is it? Uh, I, I, I know who you are, and I've seen where you live. And by all that is holy, your mothers will weep when they see what I've done to you. <laughs> and in my and in my family, among the women in my family, mm-hmm. you got to sleep sometime. Is a real threat. Oh God. <laughs> It has been done. Okay. My grandmother once stabbed my grandfather in his sleep. And oh, we have totally taken a wrong way. Anyway, That's back to Derek. Uh, <laughs> so, so role play. I, wanna, I want you to know that tangent was not entirely my fault. No, I'm just, that's fair. Just throwing uh, that out. I will point out that because he was sleeping, she did have advantage on the attack roll. There you go. She did. She did. He was so also, she was able to roll 2d20. Exactly. Just well, one. it was a pair of scissors, so <laughs> two blades. So, yeah, um, probably did like a d4 plus her strength damage. Was she really strong? Um, she was a grandmother. Yes. Okay. So no, grandmas a, could do she amazing. She was a mom at the time. She had the height advantage. Oh, right. And she did. So, he was laying on the couch. The, the yeah. higher ground. So. Anakin, I have the high ground. Anyway. <laughs> I like that they kind of took that away in 5e, because uh-huh. they're like, because if you remember in 3.5, they're like, okay, if you're like slightly higher than this person, you get like a plus one to all your attack rolls. Yeah. It's like, god damn, stop. There's too many the charts math involved to pay in, attention yeah, exactly. to. Yeah, it, f- 3, 5, and Pathfinder, now that 5 exists, mm. um, when people say, what should I do to start getting into gaming, I say 5. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so three, we can hold 3, 5, and Pathfinder in reserve for the veterans, the people who right. are rules crunchy and, and want to, to get, you know, their hands dirty and, and be stuck doing math. You've only just said something Mm -hmm. that has taken me about six months to tell everybody and not make everyone mad. Okay. (laughs) Like, because that's what people think is that, you know, the people think the opposite. They're like, okay, there is the game Uh and then there's the wrong ones. Right. Um, But no, like, like that's something that you you touched on something like amazing that when you are looking for a game, you are not looking for, I am playing this game. Uh No, no, no. You're looking for the engine to right. run a game that your DM has put together. Mm-hmm. Your dungeon master is the, we'll say, he, he's Skyrim. Your dungeon master is Skyrim. Gotcha. And the addition of Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder or Vampire or whatever you're playing, that's the PlayStation. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great way of looking at it, too. Um, you know, because the one thing that I've noticed about all the additions and all the offshoots and all the different things is it's about a story. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so much fourth edition D anD D. We're not going to talk about that. But I'd um, love to. <laughs> oh, if I want to play an MMO, I'll just crank up World of Warcraft. You know, that's my that's my it's been my consistent opinion on fourth edition D anD D. There there is some gems in fourth edition. Mm-hmm. Um, they're but, hidden in the back of the book. You know, they're hidden in a lot of weird places <laughs> in that game um, because it acknowledge it did the thing that nobody wanted it to do. They're like, hello and welcome to a game. They're like. Can you go back to talking about Morning Canaan for eight pages? Yeah. No. Um, but, you know, there's an interesting thing because, like, starting to acknowledge the, the game structure, mm-hmm. you see a lot of games now referencing scenes okay. and referencing sessions, which Dungeons & Dragons never calls anything a session. Right. They might tell you in the front of the book, and they're like, so you get this three times per day. Mm-hmm. It's like three times when we're playing the game. No, 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 dude. Like, your character goes to sleep, he wakes up, has, like, a sandwich and a banana, and he's got all of his spells back. Mm -hmm. But now the games are starting to acknowledge, hey, this is how you play it in the structure. 4E kind of did that, and, like, that's kind of the thing that I like. I don't mind, like, 5E being like, yes, now every seven days on the eighth moon, you can now have (laughs) this spell that will shatter the cosmos. 4E was like... Hey, man, so you do this, they roll the thing, you get this many dice, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, was nice of them, but it just wasn't what the community wanted. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'll tell you, 
that's the first time I've heard fourth edition described that way. Yeah. And it makes it make a little, uh, I'll hate it a little bit less today. <laughs> I'll go back to hating it full throttle tomorrow. Oh, that's but you, you saw, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> um, but you softened that a little bit. So I appreciate that. That's, it's good to see a constructive take on it. It was so hard when I had the Jeremy Crawford interview and we're talking about it and I'm rolling through, you know, where he started and, you know, his participation and whatnot. I, I, I wanted to go fourth edition. What were you thinking? <laughs> you know, it was in the back of my head, but I'm like, no, I like this man so much. I'm just going to kind of ease into him talking about fourth edition. And he himself kind of o- offered up that it was a play test for other things. And it, right. you know, they were trying some stuff out and it wasn't as popular as they wanted it to be. And I'm like, yeah, it sucked. But, you know, <laughs> you know that's the funny thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, speaking of Jeremy Crawford, I had a GIF Vogue battle with him on Twitter nice. last week um, because I wrote a joke spell called vogue battle okay uh after that came up in the stream uh friends of mine are in um and you know it's just they're very fun people Mm -hmm. but game design is such a crapshoot oh yeah because you know with something like fourth edition it was like the turn of the millennium and you're like oh we need a new D &D." D. um especially after 3.5 got as bloated as it did once you hit tome of battle and you're like okay so i have anime powers now Mm -hmm. (laughs) where do we go from here you know, I thought it was yeah time for a new fourth for a new edition. Mm. You know, Super my, Saiyan, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like yeah, so I can turn Super Saiyan three times per day on the eighth moon of the god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, God, God mode is different. Um, yeah. But you know, as you know, as I was researching, because I didn't come in till 2013 as far as gaming. Looking back, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense as to why they needed to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but. When you have a community that is obsessed with crunchiness, mm-hmm. that's kind of the problem. And then that started. That's why I started doing what I did mm-hmm. um, because I said, "Yay, new edition!" There's no swashbuckler in here. I only play swashbucklers. That uh, gives me a lot of work to do. Yeah. Oh, and there he gives us our nice little segue into tell us about the Mage College. You know you. You sound surprised. I'm a dungeon master. I know where I'm, what I'm doing. <laughs> that was more for Chris's benefit. <laughs> I'm one of the cats she has to herd on a regular basis. I'm the jello she nails to a tree. Things like that. Damn it, he's producing himself. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> If, if the man knows not, what he's doing, let him tell nice a story. when they learn and they can be independent themselves? <laughs> yeah. You if just don't want that every so often. My little him. boy is growing up. Aww. If you could see, um, if you could have seen the stream that I was DMing for last night, okay, you are a thousand times better than that. <laughs> I mean, they were all great players. We had an amazing time, but it okay. was like someone lit five basketballs on fire and said, "Derek, catch and juggle, and catch threw, and juggle," threw them into the air, and I went, "Oh okay. shit!" I have, I, I have a quick question. Yeah. Was the last name Wexler by <laughs> any of them? No. Uh, no. Are you sure? They might be related. No. Any follower of the podcast knows that reference. So. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Um, He's like, where are we going with I, this? I, no, it's, it's, they were all great. Um, it, I was DMing for uh, the guy who runs the channel and his wife and a few people that he had brought into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just got to, there's some part of it, you just got to like say yes and okay i have no idea it's that's where stage acting comes into play right um but yeah to to get back off tangent on tangent i don't rocks fall everybody dies i'm not a i am not a geomancer i don't know directions and shit um (laughs) but yeah so the mage college because that was that was something that i i started because i didn't even want to do homebrew originally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because i said to myself i am not going to be good at this it's really yeah because it was daunting to me Okay. Start out because there was already another uh, website called Middle Finger of Vecna. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we got that last night in our Saturday campaign. Oh, the, well, really? We're we're getting all the reliquaries of Vecna. Oh boy. We have the scalp. He's a, a great foot. guy. Yeah. What what edition are you playing in that one? We're playing the peanut butter handbook edition. Okay. Which is. Uh, <laughs> what? Run that so, by me again. Somebody did a, a custom, uh, a custom edition, and of it's like Castles and Crusades and First Edition, and kind of blended it together. Yeah, that's it, neat. I like that. And yeah. my husband, um, he is a completist. He has everything and anything. You'll you would be very jealous of our. Basement. You would love his basement, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, and so he that's used. The first time I've heard those words. The, <laughs> <laughs> I like but this guy. But not always in that context. <laughs> yeah. He well, used oh, lotion on its skin. A double entendre? I did not know. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> he used um, the Lulu print on demand, um, corp company or whatever to print these, um, 
thin. It should have been uh, um, a player's handbook. It should have said PHB, mm-hmm. but, but, but the typo it came out PBH. So we all <laughs> reference it as our peanut butter handbook yeah. type, uh, type thing. But it goes back, throws back to like first edition and castles and crusades, and and makes it just a little easier to run and play. I mean, granted. Sean, uh, myself, Mark, we're all veteran players. Tyler's been playing for seven years now, but he doesn't play consistently. He's my uh, 19-year-old. And it's just something that we only have this book to look at Mm -hmm. type thing. So, I mean, we've played Basic, and we've played the Rules Cyclopedia. We've played 1st Edition, 2nd Edition, 3.0, 3.5. We totally skipped over 4th Edition. (laughs) And now we're playing 5th Edition. We've played Pathfinder, but some of it gets so rules-heavy with all the the feats and this and that and the other thing. And Randy allowed us to use, uh, like, an extra feats book for the 3.5. So we had, like, unarmored defense type thing. Oh, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. In in this one campaign, we were playing 3.5 with all of the books. So it was just ridiculous. So That was my first game. Yeah. I made that mistake. Yeah. I mean, she had an unarmored armor class of, like, 60. It was was like, what? It was, like, like (laughs) 40-something. Yeah. Can you tell me which of the lords in the nine hells you made <laughs> the bargain with to get that? It, it uh, was oh. it was a matter of um, if you weren't wearing armor. I think I was a mage yep. or something. So after so many levels, you got your level as a bonus level on top of as everything bonus else. On top, so I'm between. We were all 26, 27, 28 at that. Between point. Hunter and I, like one of us had like a forty something, and the other one had like a forty seven. Yeah, it was but ridiculous. the thing is, is because of three five, we're still getting hit on a regular basis. Right, <laughs> we were chasing down a Tarask. Yeah. So, but um, that was so a fun day. Any new campaigns in regards to that? My husband, if he's DM, he's like, okay, core book only. Mm-hmm. Like he limits us back to that. So like I'm running fifth edition, which everyone's like, you're DMing. I'm like, yeah. I'm... So they're giving me about six sessions before my ADD kicks in. We're on two. Today will be three. Um, I, I think she's going long haul. I got faith well, in her. What's nice is I'm... she's going seven. Yeah, could be. <laughs> um, I've actually seven... got about six months or so. But what helps is it's an every other Sunday type thing. Right. And um, I'm using um, Keep on the Borderlands. And old it's been school. old school, nice. but it's been converted to fifth edition. That's yeah. awesome. So, and it's funny because my husband has run that module so many times that he's sitting in the corner playing the cleric mapping. He's yeah. like, eh. <laughs> he's letting everyone else do it. But we're all exploring it. But it's, anew. A, ta- but it's a table of 10. Oh my God. Yes. So yeah. therefore me being a DM. <laughs> yeah. Question. Yes. What is wrong with you? <laughs> so many things. See, here's the thing. This I, group, this group formed, I want to say years ago, like Riker was still little. Yeah. So well, Riker's I, ten. So yeah, Riker. he was like eighteen months old when we all when we all c- came together for the first time with me involved because you and I played twenty years ago. But then there was a gap. Anyway, um, it's it's more of a social occasion mm-hmm. than than anything else. And so it feels <laughs> we weird through- to say, okay, I'm going to take these four people and the rest of you can't come to play. Right. You we know, can't do that. part of our ceremony on the every other Sunday, part of our whole rhythm is that we get together around four o'clock. We have dinner together. We hang out. We catch up with each other. It's every other week. So what's been going on the past couple of weeks? Hey, all right, cool. Now let's go down the, by, by five o'clock, six o'clock. We're all at the gaming table and we're now we're, we're off and running in our little strike force and whatnot. Gotcha. So it's, it's more of, you know, we're all old. <laughs> so more of a social thing for yeah. us at this point. It's our bridge night. And, I used to say poker night, but we're old, so it's bridge night now. And I'm a teacher, so I managing used to, I, managing a large class is something she's and, good at. And my whole thing is, I've basically told the table. I'm like, if I have, if I tell you guys to roll perception checks, and you're having side conversations. Whoever doesn't roll the perception check because they weren't paying attention, they're the ones that are going hit, to get hit first. You know, like that that sort of stuff is where, where homebrew and, starts. And, yeah. and, and, and those are the ones that, I mean, granted, so Chris is like, he's having a conversation with with Doug over here. He's like, oh, I heard her say roll a perception check. So yeah. He's got, <laughs> he's got the other one. I'm frantically looking for my 20 side. I'm like, oh, crap. He's like, I don't know if she directed it at me, but I'm rolling. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side, I'm, I'm but, rolling, damn it. But like today... We're going to only have seven because three are gone. Yeah. But I think Ian's jumping in as a background character. Cool. Cleric. For today because one of our clerics is gone, Yay. our bard's gone, and our wizard's gone. But starting this campaign um, a month ago, they didn't know what they were playing. 
I created all the characters, and they were given a playing card, and so therefore they had to pick from the playing card because I know Chris is going to come up with a druid uh, mage, going to be a thurge eventually see, type thing. See, I thought that it was so apropos that he got a ranger. <laughs> and then yeah. he got a ranger. So I, <laughs> Which but, is my other go-to class over the years. He's like, oh, I can play this. But then like my son Tyler ended up pulling the bard, and our friend Hunter pulled the sorcerer, and she goes, I didn't want to cast spells. Well, I don't want to play a bar. They switch. They switch. So, but I'm just like, okay. But like, they had their class, they had their alignment, they had their personality traits, and I'm like, Hunter's like, but I don't want to be lawful good. That was the best thing because yeah. she always plays Caddick oh. neutral. So, she always plays Caddick Wexler. Caddick Wexler. Plays. Yeah, she's one of the don't Wexlers. Get me started on alignment. I <laughs> we've been having discussions about it lately. I'm 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 as a DM. I'm almost on the verge of just doing away with it completely. Well, that's kind of what I do. But what I tell people, what I remind them, like mm-hmm. I desperately remind them, mm-hmm. um, is that alignment is not a guide. It is a descriptor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because like if any of you are familiar with like Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Um, so, OK. Yeah, <laughs> there, I got I got two. the young crowd over here. Um, They're so under there, 20. So there is there's a character named Vegeta. OK. Um, and this dude has been evil this entire time. Yeah. Um, but he's one of the good guys, but he frames everything that he does through that lens of he's a shitty person. Right. But he's still a good guy. He's still defending the world. Uh-huh. But, but he not he's not nice about it. No, he's not. He's mm-hmm. like, he's like doing the, the Mass Effect, like renegade for life kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, of course I'm going to be like that because I'm the Prince of Satan. He sounds exactly like that. I'm okay. Yes. The voice <laughs> actor good. coming out. Very good. Um... And, but like that's like his sort of shtick. And when people take something in Dungeons and Dragons, they go, "I am the lawful good paladin." Yes. <laughs> Excuse Dad. me. Well, I am now lawful good because it says it tattooed onto my butt. Yes. <laughs> and like that's the you way may kiss my alignment <laughs> tattoo as you see fit. Exactly. And people think that like that's how they have to play the character. No, 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 no. Um, my wife, who you guys were hyping in the beginning of the episode, yes, she changed my alignment from lawful good to chaotic neutral. That can happen. Okay. Oh, yeah. His oh. real alignment, not its character. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I'm like legit, like me as a person. Very lawful good, now chaotic neutral. People are like, hey, um, do you want to help me with like, when there's, there's this like charity going on? I'm like, what's in it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons I was broken on the way here when I, he I, said that before. Well, that, I, I need that, to meet Kana. I'm just that, saying that. Well, that She's was awesome. like what people were saying in regards to moving, mm-hmm. helping you move. And you're like, they're like, what can you provide? And he's like, beer and pizza. They're like, you should have led with that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, that's chaotic neutral on a whim. Like, law would be like, okay, is this like the right thing to do? Is this like mm-hmm. the orderly thing to do? And meanwhile, you're like, what can I get out of it? How much and how often? Mm-hmm. Um, and people can be like that. People forget that alignment is not a compass, but just simply like, I am An tall. Idea. Yeah, like I am tall. Yeah. I am my like I my favorite color is blue. I am a nice person habitually, but sometimes that changes. Like if you look at Marvel characters, it's like what's Magneto's alignment? Right. Congratulations. We have a whole new podcast episode. I'm oh my sorry. god. I'm yeah, no, I'm 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 sure we could have that discussion too and it'll take about an hour. Wolverine. And we won't come oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. The anti hero. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. that's that thing. Did you guys ever read any of the the rules for Dragonlance? Uh, no. I need to read up on Dragon It's Lights. been a very long okay. time. When they talk about alignment, mm-hmm. there is a huge section that each alignment covers. Mm-hmm. And you have to move way, 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 way over to change alignment. <coughs> so when you do stuff out of character for you, mm-hmm. it moves you a little bit closer. But that doesn't mean you can't move back. Right. So it's it gives you the... The flexibility. Of, yeah, it gives you the, the flexibility and freedom of movement to actually yeah. be a real person as a character. My thought, you know, it's like I was saying earlier, is, is my thought as a DM is to just completely just scrap alignment altogether. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. You know, it, you let the actions define the person or define the, the character. And if somebody picks up an, a, an item that's in the book and it says they have to be good to be to hold this this item, then let's talk and let's have a brief discussion on the, at the table about how this person has behaved over the past, you know, several game sessions. And, you know, do, what do we think? Yes, Sherry. So. Uh-huh. The Mage College. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I was just about to say, no, Chris, 
But this Congratulations, is... you're Archmage Derek now. You got it. You can <laughs> take up the mantle. You're the doctor now. You have fun. Well, that's oh. true. That's totally true. You, you, and me, you and me as a team. Oh, oh my God, I would love that. That's, that's uh, I'm in. That's, right now. All right. You're looking at the old Mage College right there. I that can't was... get to any of the new so, stuff. Well, that's okay, because this is actually really fun that you pulled that up, because that was the first one. Okay. Um, I that's have gone that's through... the one that's linked on our podcast page. Oops. How would um, we find the new one? So you would go to themagecollege.wordpress.com. Okay. Hold on. Okay, I will change that. Yeah. The Mage Press, or so the Mage College dot wordpress dot com. It's the one stapled to my Twitter. Okay. Yes, I will do I that. I Twitter, so yeah. that's the problem. I barely Twitter. I, I, uh, look, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's way so better. much better. I, I run the um, the Twitter for the show, and so I will make sure that every, and I also okay. upload everything. But, okay. And it's funny, because I was so, so am I, am I hired? Am I on the team now? If you, I will talk about it. We'll, Beautiful. We'll you can do that right now on your phone, you know. Um, I'm excited about that. To, that's cool. To quote Matthew Mercer. How do you want to do this? Oh, man. <laughs> this guy is my new hero over here. I love this guy. Do you um, have a Twitch? Uh, no, I, I, so I don't have my own Twitch. Um, I've been doing, I didn't mean to talk about this. I have yes. been doing a lot of uh, appearances on uh, twitch.tv slash Scraticus. Okay. Um, he does a lot of um, RPG uh, actual play live streaming. Really For good dude. People that don't know how to spell, how would you spell? Scraticus? It would be. I was thinking about. I was gonna get a like clever like. Um, um, plug it. Just plug it. Yeah. Um, so it's Scraticus. S C R A T T I C U S, and I think I spelled that right. <laughs> Scraticus. On the way here. Uh huh. I casually mentioned to Derek that yes. there might re- be room on the Mighty Monkey TV. Twitch channel oh, for, a lot of for, that. for a <laughs> Derek run show I'm if in. he's so inclined. Derek and Chris? Um, it's only fair because he's going to invite me into his mage college. I'm going to invite him onto the Twitch channel. So it, well, it's a team It's a team thing happening right here. Yeah, um, and then that, that sounds like a lot of fun, but I have to stare at myself in the mirror and go, how do I want to do this? Yeah, <laughs> it was just No, I, I, I really idea. appreciate it. Well, you, you, you've seen Deadpool, right? Yeah. Staple the picture onto your face. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Masks. Rip it off like a bandaid. Chaotic neutral, you said it. Yeah. Uh, to quote Deadpool, you know, I don't know how Hugh Jackman does it. He just, oh, there's something about that man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was so Ryan Reynolds right there. Oh my God. It's like, well, that's, you know, that's one, one part of being a DM is that my style of DMing is part voice acting. Uh, that's why I love Matthew Mercer. But the Mage College, you know, was, was uh, a way for me to start sharing these ideas. Um, and it's like great when other people like share and when have those same ideas. Talking about alignment and how like we hate alignment, that was like a full like re- um, like article that I either wrote back in the early days or like wanted to write. Mm-hmm. Um, but then part of my issue was is that the title Archmage kind of gave me the impression that like I was like I gotta step up my game. Yeah, a it's a, you know, when you when you when you latch that one on, you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and. You know, I had s- some good ideas mm-hmm. in the beginning. You know, I'd been playing for a while, playing consistently, maybe two or three games a week since I started oh, gaming. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, but, like, the thing was, it was always constantly picking at the back of my brain. Uh, like the Siler reference earlier, mm-hmm. it was like, you need to know how to make this. Yeah. You need to know how to actually get in there and manipulate it. I'm like, wow, mental Matt Mercer, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs one of those. Um, Seriously. But so then I was like, okay, I'm going to try homebrewing because it would help with views because I'm not going to lie as a creator. It's like, yeah, you love doing the thing you do because you love it. Mm -hmm. But if you're also just like handing it to the crickets in the empty classroom, it's like, here you go. I made this dead silence. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So I started doing that, you know, partially because I wanted the attention. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also like forced me to get better at understanding game design. Mm -hmm. Um. One of the first things I tried doing because my friend, my best friend, um, was playing the Invisible Blade class, the okay. Complete Warrior in three point five. All right, I remember it. Yeah, yep. It's the one where it's like, oh, look at me, I'm like edgy and cool, and I use daggers, and you don't know where I'm coming, at, and bam, I stabbed you in the face. Yeah. And in five E, like, there's not a lot of room to do that mm-hmm. because with the subclass system, um, there's you know there's not much room. You have like at most five slots that you can put in new abilities for a character mm-hmm. until you write a new class which they don't give you a lot of room for that mm-hmm. 
Um, so I tinkered with it again and again and again. And the guys over at Middle Finger of Vecna like even gave me some feedback because I was like, "Hey, I wrote this. What do you think?" And they're like, "Oh, well, you know, it's good." And there's this thing that all early homebrewers do, mm-hmm. um, and I've had conversations with them since becoming, you know, a little bit more of a, a, a homebrew beacon, if you will, not to toot my own archmagey horn. <laughs> um, that. They all like every early homebrewer is like, yeah, but I mean, thank you for the advice, but uh, you're entirely wrong. Even though you've been doing this for a while, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm done. I'm guilty of it too. I know what you're talking about. It's you know because it's it's personal. That's one of yeah. the weird things about RPGs is that they're really personal. Mm-hmm. Um, is that so? I but after a while, you look at it like a science. You know where I did a whole week <laughs> specializing in ranger subclasses. That was about like March or April on the news site. And I wrote five new ranger subclasses. And when people were like, I think that this doesn't scale very well, you should probably... I don't think that all of you sound like that. Uh Just some of you. Just Uh some. (laughs) Um, He got me. 25%. There's there's some evidence to the the point that it doesn't exist, though. Um, Where they're like, I think it could have been balanced if you look at this. I'm going... And I would be coming actually... Actually, if you look at uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything on page 65, if you look at that ranger subclass, you'll find that they actually use a similar thing. I just implemented it differently. And then the response is, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah I see where it comes from. <laughs> because like, that's the thing. It's like, unless your name is Mike Merles or Jeremy Crawford right. or Chris Perkins or anybody who's listed in the front page yes. of any of those books, they go, you're you are not- probably wrong and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Exactly. But... You know, with a little bit, you know, of time and effort uh, and practice, now people are like, uh, like, oh, hey, I just figured, and I was like, I just came up with the idea of uh, Pop-Tart Wrangler, and then some <laughs> jerk will, like, tag me on Twitter, be like, Archmage Jerk, can you build this? I'll be like, what's in it for me? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. All right, every gamer that sits in this room, I have to ask them, your favorite character class to play? Um, hmm. That's a really hard question, especially when you spend all this time working on each and every one of them. Um, I I would say if it's a non-casting class, mm-hmm. my favorite's Rogue. Okay. Um, because I love ability. My Sherry knows this. My dad was a fencer, and he passed that on to me. Yes. So swashbucklers have become my thing. That's who I am. Okay. Um, I might call myself Archmage, uh-huh. but I'm actually a swashbuckler Rogue. Like, gotcha. It's this kind of elaborate lie. Well, that's kind of what rogues do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it fits. Exactly. I'm a Call of Swords uh, bard uh, and swashbuckler rogue mixed together. And people are like, but he calls himself Archmage. And I'm like... Enough ranks in bluff, and it doesn't matter what your character Bingo. class is. Exactly. That's the punchline. And I've got a couple scrolls. So. And i got a couple scrolls. I've got a couple scrolls. Uh-huh. Um, I took Vicious Mockery. That's all I need. That's it. Um, and press a digitation, because everything needs to be clean and the color that I want it to be. There yes. you go. Um, but casters... My favorite casting class, um, at least to play, because designing is an entirely different ballgame, uh, is Warlock. Okay. Because Warlocks are what, warlocks are a remnant of 4E with mm-hmm. that design style, because I love the idea of your personalizing every single aspect about them. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, what mystical demon present do you want? I'll take the sword, please. Um, what kind of weird powers do you want? Um, I'll take the thing that lets me levitate at will and the one where I can see through my friend's eyes because that's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Especially when they're in the bathroom, man. Right, exactly. It's like, Ew. It's like I can, I can like, uh, watch everything through your eyes for like the next hour and then they're like, I now have to be very, very careful with it. <laughs> um, Looks up straight at the sky. Mm. Nothing else. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to nap. At, I'm going to look, look at, at the, the sun. sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? I have that across the table. Nice. Um, but because warlocks kids are fun. these days. Mm-hmm. Warlocks, warlocks, you know, playing a warlock is what I do in my spare time making this stuff. Because gotcha. it's like playing with character identity is fun, mm-hmm. and warlock lets you do that. Okay. Playing a warlock is what I do in real life. That's, that's what I was expecting you to say no, there. No, no, no. It's Archmage. Archmage. Arch. It's, oh, it's an arch arc. Arch. Does it so, matter? So your boy, Matt Mercer, actually like weighed in on that. Did he really? I asked him. I was like, hey, so Archmage versus Archmage. What, what, what do I say, say to people? And he says, I've always said Arch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, well, damn, because I like Arc. And because a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, well, like, you know, there's arches and archway. And I'm like, and there's also architect, you douche. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I mostly say Archmage nowadays, mostly because when I'm in Mike Merle's Happy Fun Hour and he calls on me in class, he's like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, Archmage Derek. And I'm like, that's me, Archmage <laughs> Derek. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, cause Senpai when you, when you noticed say, me. When you say, <laughs> wow, didn't hear that earlier either. <laughs> um, I said that about Jeremy Crawford. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, when they say Archmage, you know, I think of a mage who uses electricity. Oh, okay. Oh. So. See, I That's would... why I would say Archmage, oh, because God. they use McDonald's. <laughs> I, mm, I, I throw my cheeseburger school. at you, and it becomes a fireball. <laughs> I maybe I'll write you guys a subclass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Here's your hey. hamburger wizard. Yay! <laughs> well, isn't there the hamburger? Noxious gas. That is one of the. Uh, no, that will be from Taco Bell. <laughs> No, that's from anything with onions. All right. So. All anyway, right. Yeah. All okay. right. We're going to wrap this up for now. But, Derek, I have a sus- sneaking suspicion we're going to be having a lot of conversations going forward. Oh, that'd be amazing. That's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. But thank you. Thank you for being thank with so us today, man. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, current events, short segments, and questions of the week, and, and more, um, whether it's Arch or Arc. I have a feeling it, it's it's appropriate to go to, to break with this song. A guy by the name Stephen Lynch. Very funny singer songwriter writes comical songs. A song called D and D. Rate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this is a little song about a guy you might remember from high school. Here we go. Harmonica. <laughs> I got my 12-sided die and I'm ready to roll with the wizard and my goblin crew. My friends are coming over to my mom's basement, bringing Funyuns and the Mountain Dew. I got a big broad sword made out of cardboard and that stereo's a pumping zeppelin. It's that time of the night, we turn on the black light, let the dungeons and the dragons begin. It's D&D, fighting with the legends of yore. It's d and Never kissed a lady before. Nope. Uh, Woo! All right, you gonna bring the thunder? Bring the thunder. Come on, bring the thunder, man. Come on. Let's go. Do it, baby. Do it. Now, the Lord of the Rings, the dark crystal and things, we use these as a reference tool. And when we put on our cloaks and tell warlock jokes, we're the coolest kids at the school. No, we're not. I know. Now, Tank's a real bastard, but a fair dungeon master. He's got hit points and charisma to land. And I rehearse in my room, or what I call the dragon's tomb, when I'm not uh, with my girlfriend. It's d and yeah. I'm sorry. Hold on. What? Dude. What? You got a girlfriend? <laughs> dungeon master? <laughs> no. It's d and It's the end. Virgins till the day we I am whooped. I'm still whooped. I'm going to be whooped for the next three weeks. That's what you get when you move an entire frigging house. Anyway, well, not like, you know, I didn't lift up the house itself. I and moved the, it. Yeah. Just the contents. But damn, the visual. Yeah, that's was... a different spell. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You teleported. Okay, I need somebody. I mean, do you do custom spell work? 
Um, I start, yeah, I, I like designing spells because they're simple and they don't take me all week. Okay, there is a spell that I need somebody to create. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but we've been joking. <laughs> well, we, well, we have the name, but we've been joking about it for a lot of years. You, me, Will, and Jen. Rotate crops. Okay. We're not sure what it does. We don't know if it actually moves crops from one field to another or if it just lifts the, lifts the entire field, spins it around, and sets it back down. We're not sure why you would want to do this yet, but there needs to be a rotate crop spell. It could be a version one and Or it suddenly two. spins around small dogs that have crop tails. Yeah. Mm. So the first thing in my line of work is, why do you need it? <laughs> <laughs> and what's in it for him? And what's in it for him? <laughs> that was my second question. Um, I, I need it because we've been talking about it for about 20 years. And um, what's in it for you is a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. You can't argue with that that kind of logic. So the quasi professional advice would be um <laughs> Thank you for the keys. As, as Chris hands Derek the keys to the car. Um to my car. Yeah. So the, Run. The the two the two ways you could do it, right? Is first is does anything can does it kind of work? Like um there is the plant growth spell yeah. where you take, say, like, I believe there's, like, two versions of it. One, one it works in combat, and it's like, oh, God, someone hasn't mowed in a very long time. It's very hard to get through here. Or you just, like, spontaneously. Oh, look, cucumbers. Yeah, right, yeah. You spontaneously just help, like, the nature grow around it. Mm-hmm. It could definitely be woven into that part of the spell. Um, there's an awesome guy by the name of Rich Howard, at Umbral Walker, um, on Twitter, who wrote an alchemist class. And the entire class is about making spells seem like different devices so i play a poisoner Mm -hmm. sleep is not like a mystical like ooh, i just sleepy for him it's this wood elf that looks like he he looks like a freaking cobra (laughs) pulls out a pellet from his pocket throws it at your feet and this noxious gas fills your lungs and you pass out like nobody thinks sleep looks like that no that's what that's what it looks like for him. i like okay so it's application of standard stuff but giving it that twist that that flavor bingo Okay. okay or you say, okay, well, a certain cube of whole crop, so we're lo- talking like fifth level spell for no reason. Um, <laughs> if you can move it, you give it both. Why not both? Because if you say, I don't know if it does this or this, you make it both. Um, and then you just dis- establish what does that mean for either your world, because good world building, or B, what can your characters <laughs> possibly do with it? Knowing most of my characters, it would probably be something funny (laughs) comic yes comic level is very much a part of all but one of my characters so yeah i I definitely say uh plant growth would be a really good venue for that just (laughs) pen in under the player's handbook um also can rotate crops (laughs) take that as you will and then you just cite right now, like you do the full like APA citation. The Archmage Derek said this. There you go. And you're good. And now it's legit. Bingo. You're See? on Rada. See, now I have all kinds of ideas for it. You know? <laughs> okay. Because you can use it for evil. Mm. I just destroyed all your cops by rotating them in the wrong direction. So um, mm. now they Nefarious. are going to wither. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Or um, you have that farmer that, I don't know why my crops aren't growing well. You rotate their crops, and oh my god, everything's good again. So you know, there's different ways you can use it too. My the or favorite homebrew up and drop it on somebody. <laughs> the favorite homebrew spell that I've ever seen in action. Uh, one of my one of my older gaming buddies, Matt. Um, he had the nickname Screech for a while because of the Saved by the Bell character, and so he had Screech's flaming pants. He would point at the target and go, "Liar, liar!" And poof, yeah, you're off and running, and and literally, ah, I'm a, you know, and so that, but that was always my favorite. So. Okay. That's great. I well, mean, thank you very much. No problem. Happy to help. <laughs> and, and I think you, you now get a ride home. <laughs> and you get to ride. Yay! <laughs> we were just going to leave you here. No, we would do that to Derek. He would just you join our table there. on uh, Sunday. <laughs> you bastards taking advantage of the fact I didn't prepare a teleportation circle. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wizard has to prepare his spells. <clears throat> um, so where am I? But you're not a mage, uh, we're looking so. at, is there events? any events coming up? We have events coming up. We do. Oh, yeah, the Flower City right Minicon coming up October 27th and 28th at the Grease Ridge Center Mall. We'll be back for our third Minicon there in the uh, the same wing, the movie movie uh, theater wing of the Grease Ridge Center Mall. Uh, so we'll get ready for that. We'll have some more details as that unfolds. So October 27th and 28th. If you're interested in being an exhibitor, a vendor, or an artist, tables for the weekend are only $75, and you can contact Brian at fc Brian at FC3 
ROC.org. Yay. Yay. You can contact Brian even if you're not interested. He's a very social creature. He's a very nice guy. <laughs> He'd be happy to I talk like to Brian. you. He got lots, he's yeah. got lots of information. And um, what other events do we have coming up? Anything else at the I don't moment? I think anything Nothing else. Nothing else at the, at the moment. Um, I do know that um, in regards to ideas that we had started to generate and discuss, mm-hmm. um, have been uh, taken into fruition and started by uh, Jason Hilton down at Pop Rock. Nice. So there will be a cosplay day on August 25th that will have a few of our ambassadors. Nice. I believe Tora and Rika will both be down there sometime Schnazzy. that afternoon. So check out the cosplay day. And there will be eventually uh, cosplay workshops starting um, pretty soon once I get all the details set up um, with um, locations and times. Well, that sounds like it'll be a good time. That definitely works. I have an event as well. You do? You do? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, Every day for the next week after this podcast drops, Mm -hmm. it's Invite a Friend to Listen Day. I like it. Invite a friend to listen to the podcast. And like it. And then they need to share it and mm-hmm. like it and blah, 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 so on and so forth. Pay it Comment. forward. Move it forward. And I will say hi to everybody who joins in. Absolutely. Because I'm social. All right. Everyday heroes. Not all heroes wear capes. Who is your hero? Do you know a fireman, police officer, nurse, EMT, military personnel, teacher, librarian, mortician, undertaker, janitor, katodian? Kato- what? I'm sorry. As your personal <laughs> hero. I'll wow. stop. If so, please let us know. <laughs> I'm getting evil eyes over here. Please let us know all about that person, and we will give them a shout-out on the air. Please send your nominations to fc3monkeybusiness at gmail.com. No capes. No capes for no you. No capes. That's the very first thing. It says not all heroes wear capes. It's always the first thing. No capes. No capes. No capes. All right, so question of the week. We're going to regard tried and true. What's making your geeky little heart happy? Billy, what's making your geeky little heart happy today? Oh, mine's easy this week. I just got back from New Jersey a couple days ago, spent a few weeks with uh, my... Weeks? My... A few weeks, did I say? A yeah. few yeah. days. I'm sorry. A few days. You would love to spend a few weeks <laughs> uh, with them. I may you? be moving to Red Bank, New Jersey, because I'm now <laughs> close personal friends with Kevin Smith. That is outstanding. I saw the pictures hero. you posted. Those were awesome. Yeah, Susan posted a whole bunch more this morning and had a, a great uh, day Thursday. There was Vulgarthon 2018. Nice. A uh, bunch of Kevin Smith movies, each followed by a Q&A with Kevin and his very special guests from his world of podcasting and films and stuff, and got to spend a bunch of moments with uh, with the guy I talk so much about and laughs, and it was a fantastic day. So that is great. Awesome. That's what made me very happy. That is awesome. awesome. I can't wait to meet him someday myself. Yeah. <clears throat> Derek, yeah, what's making your geeky little heart happy this week? Um, probably the fact that if you asked me six months ago that you think I'd ever be on a podcast talking about the stuff that I do concerning yeah. D&D and also uh, DMing for a live stream just last night, that's been very surreal. It's awesome. Like, wow, okay, I'm doing things. Weird. <laughs> it's always it's great when you're when you're kind of making your your passion your your thing you yeah. know when you're when you're able to kind of give it a little bit more life that little more aspect it's, you're not, you're sharing it more right that's Absolutely. the great stuff that's what I love about this all right my favorite uh, executive producer of all time Miss Sherry. <laughs> She's like, she was expecting me to go over to Ian or something, I think. <laughs> I thought to Chris. Chris. <laughs> Why? Because he was looking at me. I thought he was going to be a smart ass. Going to be? What? <laughs> what? Um, anyway. As mentioned earlier in the podcast, we just finished Gish. Sherry, what's Gish? Gish is the greatest international scavenger hunt. It is Formerly known as Gishwis. Uh, formerly known as Gishwis, which the world is has ever seen. the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. So it's like Prince, yes. but different. Yes. Formerly known as? as? Yes. Okay. But um, what if you're not familiar with Gish, Gish is, which I know at least five people in the room yep. <laughs> know what Gish is because they're, we are all on the same team. Goddess it's, Fish. It's a week-long it's week long shenanigans, basically. Uh, it's run by um, Gish, which was created by Misha Collins, and uh, is also in conjunction with his charity, Random Acts. And it basically you you sign up, you sign, you you have teams of fifteen people, and you are given a list of different things. Some things are silly. Some things are 
Charitable. Charitable. Some things are giving back to your communities. And and a lot of things are very, very artistic. Mm-hmm. And yeah, most of it's weird. <laughs> yes, most of it is definitely weird. And when you see how many people actually do this, you find you're not alone. Mm-hmm. It, um, I mean in the weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, every year they have different ones, and sometimes they will... Um, they'll, like, tag... Other celebrities, yes, in them. And one year it was uh, getting a picture of so it has something to do with Levi jeans, and it, you got extra points if you could actually get a picture of those jeans being worn by Zach Levi, yeah, the actor who was Chuck and yes. Shazam. And yes, and so people kept asking, "Can you? Will you do this?" And he kept saying, "No, I can't. I have my own team." <laughs> <laughs> so neener, neener, neener. So nobody's getting That's those fantastic. points except for my the team. team. Um, this year, uh, they highlighted um, Rachel Miner, who was on Supernatural, um, who is a good friend of Misha Collins, and people had to turn her into a magical creature for her birthday. Um, which uh, our team mem- our teammate Kylie did a beautiful picture. Oh, I saw it. It was her. gorgeous. And, that was the mermaid. Yep, and I tweeted it, and Rachel Miner liked it. Nice. Um, and. Uh, Tanya was gifted with one of the one of our things this year, which was a picture of oh. uh, Jensen Eccles done in Skittles watercolor. Yes. Oh, okay. I was just like, trying. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is for you, and I'm just like, okay. Invariably, there's always something dealing with Skittles. Skittles uh, and Jensen Eccles and Jensen Eccles usually. <laughs> Last, and usually together. Um, there was one year that people had to make videos and they had to post them on Twitter and they had to tag. Um, I went. I went dark over here. Oh, they had to tag uh, Lin Manuel, mm-hmm. and Misha did not tell Lin Manuel that Oops. he was going to be tagged in a lot of very bizarre rap videos, <laughs> and he was very confused. Poor, poor Lin Manuel. <laughs> yeah. So um, yes. Yeah, so yesterday. But now he's got his numbers, so he knows things. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but so yesterday was the last day, and for our team, that meant a day long goofiness and hanging out for those of us who could. Mm-hmm. Uh, not everybody could join us uh, and because some of us got somebody sick. moved. And yeah, I had to move the Rochester so. contingent, and another part of the Rochester contingent was in Massachusetts, and we have people on other coasts, and we have team because you, all your team doesn't have to be in the same area. It's a global but. team. You know, yes, and I really had wanted to do the uh, the mosaic. mosaic of the toilet, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just like you know, I just don't have time to even put forth it. It was like kept looking at because every day I would look to see what was new in there that something that I would at least have the ability to do and things like that because I'm not artsy, I'm not creative, I'm not the. I know I was looking at I'm like I'm not going to Tennessee. I'm like. Germany, come on! <laughs> it's like looking at all the ones that seemed really cool. But we I'm like, got the Tennessee one, and we got the Washington State one. So the, the one through another for, team, the, and one through a proxy. So a I was just teammate. like, oh, there's like so many cool things, and I'm like, yeah. I was gonna count. I'm like, well, I could do the steel wool muffler, but I'm like, I have to go buy steel wool. I'm like, oh, I could do that, and it's just like, yeah. like <sighs> my my personal favorite one was the fact that people at my work. Just don't even question it. Um, there was one a couple years ago where it was, don't sugarcoat your feelings. Actually, do sugarcoat your feelings. Confront your boss while covered in powdered sugar. <laughs> so I got to look at a co-worker and say, would you please come outside and cover me in powdered sugar? I need to go talk to our boss. <laughs> and I have pictures of me yelling at our boss. <laughs> while With powdered sugar We're covered over. in powdered sugar and her looking terrified, but she agreed to do it. So <laughs> sandbox. Oh, we were going to do that when we never got to do that. But oh, actually, that was ball pit this year. What last a couple of years ago it was a sandbox. Yeah, we never actually did it. We were we were given permission to do a meeting in a sandbox in the in my office, mm-hmm. but we never got a chance to do Wasn't it. Wasn't the one last year? Um, there was a meeting, meeting in, in a pool. In a pool. Yes. Yeah, that Becca one did was that one. Yep. Last Becca year, did that I remember one. that one. All um, right. So Gish, and it's always been, and the actual event is always August, yes. isn't it? Uh huh. Okay. So something to look forward to for next year. I think we got to get we got to bring everybody together, do our own team. Yeah. Bring your team on board with us, and we'll just ha- we'll party on, party on Wayne, party on Garth. Yep. She's okay. looking at me like, no, you can bring your team on to board with mine. Um, well, we're yeah. on the, the same, same team. team. Yes, dear. You are team Idgets. I am. I <laughs> prove yeah, that every day. <laughs> yeah, Idget. Yes. Ian, what's making your geeky little heart happy this week? Talk to the microphone. Just don't stare at me. 
I help run a server. I guess that's pretty happy. Yeah, you've been getting. Into, he's been doing Minecraft, right? Yes. So he's been getting. He's been Minecraft up in his game in sport. Minecraft, doing some more social, meeting some people. Yep. Building some castles. Yep. I run a kingdom. And and he got. It's, he's. I have finally succumbed. I have gotten. I have a Minecraft account now. And I'm building castles with my son. He's going to join the kingdom of Evermore. 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 Slightly okay. <laughs> How about you, Chris? What's going on in, in your world that you want to share today? Anything making your geeky little heart happy? Well, I didn't get to do Gish yesterday because I went and mowed the lawn first. Yeah. And, uh, heat stroke? Got heat exhaustion, yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, That's not we got there happy. and I hung out for a little bit and I said, yeah, I need to go home. That doesn't sound very happy. No. So. so I guess the, the, the fun thing is we got Derek here. There you go. <laughs> that's been fun. It's been ha- it fun is, having on board with you, man. Very great to be here. You know, we had two hours of fun drive here, and we got two more hours of drive yeah. back. There you go. It'll be just as fun. <laughs> and another podcast. And another podcast. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Tanya? Um, I started a new series this week, a uh, uh, TV series on Santa Clarita Diet. Oh, I watched, we watched the, we watched the, first, the first couple, couple episodes. of episodes. And that. I... Love the fact that Nathan Fillion was in the very first episode. Yep, that, that was wonderful. <laughs> that, that, that type thing, and I'm like, you know, and what I what I like about it is at least about the show right now, it's like 28 minutes, mm-hmm. so it's rarely fast. It keeps my attention for those 28 minutes, and I don't. And get, it's Drew Barrymore. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, and yeah. it's just a matter of it's just funny. But I'm like, I'm thinking their next door neighbor wasn't he from Desperate Housewives? Never the, watched. The, Never watched the, it. The sheriff. I think he was from. Never uh, watched it, so I don't know. So uh, that no. could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think he is, but it's just, just like, just a new show to watch, mm-hmm. type thing. So I'll have to check it out sometime. Except for I have to kick my kid out if he happens to come in to pause because the language is horrible. Oh, it, <laughs> Sherry would be. I don't the, resplendent those with days. colorful metaphors. Yeah, there would be sp- Breaker button 20 million <laughs> times in the first 30 seconds. She'd be laying on it like an egg. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So that, that's, like, that's my only like negative about it. Uh-huh. It's just the it's, it's coarse. high level of language. Monk, grab a microphone. Tell me what's been making your geeky little heart happy this week. Uh, I got my boyfriend to watch all three Lord of the Rings movies with me. Nice. Yep, he hadn't. He'd seen bits and pieces of them, uh-huh. so I actually got him to sit down Extended and watch cut. them. I don't even know. We were we were done at like two a.m. in the morning because when I told him the last movie refuses to end, are you sure you don't want to watch this tomorrow? He's like, no, we'll watch it now. And he was like, okay, you were right. It refuses <laughs> to end. Well, the last scene alone was about two hours, I think, if I remember correctly. Honestly, yeah. The it is the movie that never ends. Anyway, as Kevin Smith and uh, Clerks two. Uh, yeah, describing walking, 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 walking. <laughs> bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so Chris, Randall. yes, dear. What's making your geeky little heart happy? I went home. Yes, that's it. It's plain and simple. I went home. Translation: He bought a house and he's now a homeowner. Yes, so he <laughs> went to his new house. Yes, I went home. <laughs> I have a place. It's me. I have two houses and now. And he's going from room to room trying to figure out which room to unpacking start. Unpacking has been a series of side quests. It's great. I, I, like, I, like this morning, I woke up this morning and I started unpacking clothes in the bedroom. I'm like, okay, well, I'm in this room, so I might as well just try and kill some boxes off while I'm here. And then some what, something led me downstairs because I'm like, oh, I got to go downstairs to the foyer because I remember this box is down there. While I was there, I started emptying out the foyer. And one of the boxes led me into the living room. And I'm like, oh, while I'm here, I might as well do this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> it's it's so just no, a big connect like the dots. It's a no- big connect the dots. Eventually, and, you'll connect all the dots, and every, all your boxes will be unpacked. And that will be the first chapter. And then the next chapter will be painting the rooms. Okay, now I got to paint this. One. Okay. See, you should have done the painting first. I, you know what? I, I just timing did not mm-hmm. enter lend itself. itself to, to yeah, that. did not lend itself to that whole idea. But I'm home. <clears throat> Yay. And he's got lots of friends that are volunteering to paint right now. <laughs> I, I can't say that enough. I can't say that how how amazing. The outpouring of of assistance and people being there and stopping by and helping with the move and everything it has been amazing. There's not enough I, I, not enough time for me to thank everybody who's been involved so far. Now, now the question becomes: When it comes to painting, are we doing murals? Mm, you know what? I actually I think I might do one in my in my room because I it, it, when you walk in and there's this whole bare wall and it's like wait. <laughs> I have no you plans. You can literally make it a bare wall. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I want to take the artwork out because the, the previous owner left a lot of stuff behind. 
Lots. A lots. Okay. Um, we might need a roll-off dumpster for... Well, no, <laughs> the, 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 the artwork stuff talk to me about later. Yeah. I, I think I might want a mural in my bedroom, though. That's a thing. I might do my own. Celestial kitchen. <laughs> oh Jesus! The celestial bug Don't jar. Start with the celestial kitchen again. Shut up. Anyway, we, so that's when that. we lived in Syracuse. We had mm-hmm. a celestial we, kitchen. Our kitchen was dark blue and gold, and had gold glitter on the ceiling. Oh, no, that's phenomenal. Melanie had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> I actually have. I have an idea in my head where I might insulate and, and close up and, and um, the attic, mm-hmm. insulate it, and put drywall up, and then paint the whole attic ceiling black and do glow of the dark stars. <laughs> In we had that in the living room. We had that in the living room. <laughs> yeah. And then yes, so did. so then you know, and in Lana's room. So Ian and I could say we're going to space when we're going up to the attic. You know. Anyway, that's how my twisted mind works. Yeah. So we're done. That's it. <laughs> that's enough of that. Time to, time to go home. Thank you for hanging out with us for another week. And this has been Monkey Business, your weekly dose of insanity, brought to you by the Mighty Monkey Corporation. Purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con coming at you somewhere along the line in 2019. We love you. We miss you. We want you. We need you. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Patreon. And follow us wherever we go because we'll lead you to where the entertainment is. So have a great day. Have a great week. And we will see you all soon. Dumb, dumb. dumb.